Alright YouTube, um, this is Austin Lamb with Design of Serpents. I just wanted to make this video for um, uh, explaining one thing that I didn't get to explain in my last video. And also I wanted to do a, a tad bit of updates to um, to a few things. Um, so, and also kind of explain what I'm going to do with next year with uh, my reptile room. So, let's get started. First off I wanted to start with uh, this thing right here. This was going to be an incubator, but um, turns out this one holds temperature well, and this one does not. It'd be like 90 degrees at the top, it'd be 85 degrees in the middle, and 82 degrees at the very bottom, way down there. So I'd probably next year just buy another one of these, or one of the ones from LLL Reptile that cost $130 and can hold six clutches. Just because, honestly, next year, I mean, I only produce two pinstripes, and so I might not even, I'll probably be able to buy uh, one female morph, maybe a female pastel of around 800 grams for how much I'm going to be able to sell those two for, so I probably won't be able to have super huge amount of clutches next year, so, um, yeah, and I've got, this is just all going to be storage, all my bedding's there, and those are my textbooks that I haven't turned back into my high school. <laughs> Probably gonna get fined for that. And um, my ball pythons are going through the first shed. I'm not really gonna show you them because they're no different. But uh, a few of them already shed out, and uh, the rest are still in shed or haven't gone into shed yet. But they all will in time. And I'm gonna take the camera off the stand for now. Sorry if it gets too shaky, but. Alright, this is my Crested Gecko cage, which I did change around, just because I wasn't happy with the little amount of stuff that I had in there, so um, I took an opportunity when I noticed that these guys, my little armadillo lizards, uh, weren't eating very well in the big cage, so I moved them into a smaller cage, and uh, they seem to be doing much better now. So I took one of the leaf things out, cleaned it, and one of the logs out, and cleaned it, and so I could put it in here. So the log's in the very back, and the leaves are right there, so I made that better, and that's him right up there. I like to miss that down quite frequently, because... Well, it probably helps them a little bit. That's his food, which I just dumped a whole bunch of worms in there, so hopefully he is eating them. I also, there's some in the cage too, like you notice, there's um, worm diggings. Some of them must have gotten out or something. Sometimes he climbs in with them and they'll just climb over him. But, uh, which, I mean, is totally fine. They'll probably just eat the log and, you know, he'll see them. He will see them. So. Yeah, I just wanted to make an update on that, and then, of course, these guys are now in this 20-gallon cage. I don't know what I'm going to stick down there. Honestly, I wouldn't stick any snakes in there, because the, the cage lid is very easily taken out. So, um, yeah. You know, I could show you, I'm going to show you the big female. She's in shed right now, but, um, you know, she's just huge. I'd like to, uh, give you a reference of how big she really is. You know, if you stick your hand in there, I mean, she's bigger around than my forearm now. Usually, I just I, when I tell people about ball pythons, they're like, "Oh, py pythons, they're gonna get enormous." I'm like, "No, these don't get bigger around than your forearm." And well, that proved me wrong. She got enormous. She's definitely grown since my last video, and she should shut out soon. So, well, I'm gonna stop the video now, but um. Yeah, I'll explain in my other video what I'm going to do over the next year or so.